uh, some things about the Bible, and then we're going to go uh, recognize the military men. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about tonight, it doesn't really have to do so much with uh, Veterans Day, but it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So if you take your Bible over there, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll look at verse 44. First Corinthians chapter two. I think I got it in here somewhere. First Corinthians chapter two and verse fourteen. And the Bible says, But the natural man, that's just a man just born, he's not saved. He's not saved. He's just natural man. And the Bible says there, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Well, how can he? He doesn't have the Spirit of God in him. The Bible says a man knows another man by the Spirit of man that is in him. We understand each other well. You women understand each other well. You have the same spirit. But a lost man doesn't have the same spirit a saved man has. And so it says, but the natural man receiveth uh, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Yeah, uh, what, what was the foolishness to him was the things of the Spirit of God. Uh, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Uh, take your Bible to go to Jude chapter 12. Notice that the lost man cannot relate to spiritual matters. It's not possible for him to be successful uh, to tell people uh, what God said or what God, uh, what's in the Bible or, or to be a, a Bible teacher. Uh, it's not, in a, a lost man doing that would be uh, one that would give you much error because he cannot perceive those things that are spiritual. All right, Jude uh, verse 12 and the Bible says this, it says, But these are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Uh, the, the Bible says in verse 19, same place in, in Jude 19, it says, uh, these be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Uh, I, I say these things because there are men in our society and that have come and gone in our history that have been brilliant men, just brilliant men, great minds, very smart, but they are lost. And they write lexicons and they put out dictionaries and they put out, they put out, they put, out, they put out literature for Christians. And then we see it in a book. We get a Greek lexicon, and they're brilliant men. And their work is tremendously done. Uh, they're, they're very uh, very articulate. They're very smart. And they can tell you how things go on a scholastic level. But they don't have the spirit. And I want to say that those kind of men, and there's been tons of them, I've got a lot of their names on a sheet. Uh, they have come up and they have taught perverse things about the Bible. And they were revered because of their intellect and because they're of their renown and because of their credential. Uh, our society would lift them up and hail them as smart. And, uh, and it was an error. A big error, because they didn't understand spiritual things. They were not even saved men. A lot of those men, like F.F. F. Bruce, and there's a lot of them. There, I, and, I, and I'm Thayer, there's a lot of names uh, uh, that are on my list of these men that have a great influence in America, that have written works for the body of Christ, and when, they, and when they ask for the testimony of those men, uh, they're not even saved. I, I got the testimony of Westcott and Hort in, in, in print. And, and they ask him, uh, uh, give us a testimony of how you got saved. 
and what he says, you, you read it yourself, even if you're a young Christian, you say, well, anyhow, I got saved. I mean, he didn't need, and then Lightfoot, and a lot of those guys that sat at that revision committee in the 1881 uh, printing of the, of, of the Bible to give Christians a Bible, half the men on that committee weren't even saved men. And there's a lot of corruption crept in starting in 1981. Uh, uh, not here in America so much. It was over in Europe. And in 1901, the American Standard Version came up. And they took the same text from the 1881 revision and put it in the uh, American Standard Version of 1901. And the same corrupt stuff was done. But because they knew Greek so well, and because they had such credential, in fact, there was nobody any smarter than they were. They were top of the line when it came to big brains. They were good. So everybody bowed to them as if they were somebody. But they were lost men. And because they were lost men, uh, you know, no fault of their own. They didn't, they didn't know. Their spirit, we read the Bible. It said they are spiritually discerned. They have not the spirit. How could they put out a good work? You say, why are you saying all this stuff? Because I wanted to lay a little foundation to let you know that the things that you read, the books that you buy, you want to be careful. Because remember, the people that write them, though they be brilliant men, though they claim to know God. Listen, you can believe in God. You could be a deist and not be saved. Amen. And uh, America is full of counterfeits and deceitful writings of corrupt men that couldn't, couldn't give you a spiritual book if they wanted to because they don't have the Spirit of God. So when you get a lexicon, remember, it may give you some information, but it cannot replace the Bible. This is without error. This is without mistake. They can't make that claim. And neither can you, and neither can me. I write it, you look at it, you go, Pastor Anders, he's a good man. Oh, we know, uh, he, he's got a good heart. I am also prone to error. You, you don't want to hang your soul on my opinions. <laughs> Amen? But you want to hang your soul on this, and you won't have to worry about it. Uh, you watch out for guys like Webster. Good man, brilliant man. Maybe saved, maybe not. He said he is. Probably is. Don't know. But you can't take his dictionary and say, this is infallible. Because it's not. It's not. He'll tell you that uh, a fish is a whale. <laughs> right? But the Bible says a great fish is uh, not a whale, but a, or, or a whale is a fish. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. All right, so the... The first thing, the first thing I wanted you guys to, to grasp, and I know you, you understand it well, there's a lot of good stuff at the bookstores, and you can read, you can go to bookstores, and you can get Bibles, and you can get lexicons, and you can get manuscripts, you can get all kinds of neat stuff. And I just want you to know, just because those men claim to know God doesn't mean that what they're telling you is something you want to put your confidence in. What you want to do is look at what they said, line it up with what the Bible said, and take the Bible over what they said if it doesn't match. If it matches, fine. Fine. All right, the next thing is found in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Galatians, Philippians, or Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And you get Colossians chapter 2, and we'll go down there to verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So he's got him a, uh, a philosophy, and he's got a tradition that has been followed all down through hundreds of years. We've just always done it this way. That's a tradition. Uh, take your Bible and go to Matthew 7. Matthew 7. What I, what, I'm want, what I want to do tonight is uh, protect the sheep. 
And that's what I would like to do because there's so much out there these days. And some of it smiles, some of it's in suits and ties, some of it praises God, and some of it's just a big old lie. Yeah. And it's very deceitful. You see the man up there talking, he's praising the Lord, he's saying all this stuff, and you go, oh yeah, boy, I can count on that. Well, if it matches the Bible, you can. But remember, men are full of error. Men make mistakes. All right, uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 13. You got, a, you got a King James Bible. You got a King James Bible because somebody went to a lot of trouble and a lot of prayer and a lot of heartbreak to find an English text that could be called the Word of God. Not just a good translation, not just a valiant effort by King James men, but as it is in truth, the Word of God. If it is the Word of God, it will not have a mistake. If it is the Word of God, then all of the manuscript evidence that we have will be translated into English. All of it. Nothing left out. Amen. And, uh, and so uh, we found an English text, and it's an old one. It was put out in 1611, authorized by the king. And his name was James, Jacob. And, uh, and he put out a, a Bible, and we have it today. It's called the King James Bible. And what is very unique about that Bible is that it will not, it does not do what the rest of them have done. And that is to change and alter and add and subtract words and verses. All right, uh, Matthew 7 and verse 13, and the Bible says this, uh, enter ye in at the straight uh, gate, for wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. Uh, no, for wide, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Uh, that's, uh, I was looking for a verse that talked about uh, false prophets are mentioned in verse 15, but one of them said, uh, Jesus Christ said, uh, uh, beware of the people. He says, you, you, uh, you teach for doctrines the traditions of men. And I thought it was there in Matthew 7, but uh, it's probably in another verse somewhere. Uh, but Jesus Christ said that he got, he got mad at the Pharisees. And remember what a Pharisee is. He is their modern-day preacher. He's the guy that's the religious guy the, that, that stands between them and God that tells the people, uh, what God says, and uh, he said, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, and then he told them, he said, you teach uh, for doctrine, the command, you teach the commandments, the doctrine for commandments are meant by your tradition, something like that. You found it? Mark 7, 8. Thank you. Oh yeah, I got it right here, Mark 17, I don't know how I said Matthew. I can't read my own writing. Thank you, brother. Good catch. Now, all right, that'd be Mark chapter 7. And, uh, and we want to see what Jesus said because these are religious people that the people trusted. And Jesus said, you don't want to be trusting these guys. I know they look good. I know the society accepts them. I know, you know, but, but they're not good men because they teach for commandments, uh, 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 doctrines uh, by their traditions. All right, Mark 7 and verse uh, 13. Thank you, brother. All right, verse 6. And he answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, that is, is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he says, For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. And so even if he's a saved man, and I don't think these men were, but let's say a saved man, 
uh, uh, teach a tradition that they have. Amen. Uh, you look at the Roman Catholic Church and all the traditions that they have. And they've done them for years and years and years. We've just always done it this way. And they don't want to break those traditions. But those traditions are not biblical. I asked a Catholic one time, I says, uh, you, you believe in the Pope? And he goes, yeah. And I said, find me one in the Bible. He's not in there. You believe, you believe in the holy water? Yeah. All right, find me a holy water in the New Testament. See if you can find me any holy water in the New Testament. I couldn't find, you couldn't find any. There's not there. Uh, uh, will you call the guy father? Why do you call the guy father? What? Oh, yeah, where's the rosary in the Bible? You believe in the rosary? Listen, if the rosary's in the Bible, I'd go buy 50 of them and pass them out. <laughs> I, I, if, if they were in the Bible, wouldn't you? Yeah. If they were in the Bible, I, got, I, think I, I think Abe's got a little rosary, but it's for counting golf strokes, you know. <laughs> If you don't keep up with the golf strokes, she puts a beat on you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but people teach traditions of men uh, the way they do it. Uh, you've got Mormons, you've got Catholics, you've got Jehovah's Witnesses, you've got Seventh-day Adventists. You've got all kinds of wild stuff, and they, and they teach things that are not found in the Bible. I think I told you the other day about the uh, Mormons with the holy underwear. Where's that in the Bible? Why are you doing that? Why are you making your people do that? You're teaching those things that, as if God would require such a thing. And he does not require them. It's just traditions uh, that they pass on. What's your final authority in, in your faith? Is it your traditions or is it the Bible? If it's the Bible, then let's, let's get rid of all those traditions unless they're in the Bible. And so even if there's a, uh, even if there's a saved man... Uh, a saved man, I take your Bible and go to 1 Timothy, and we'll stop here because I don't want to take any more time up for the military men here tonight. But uh, 1 Timothy, even, even saved men uh, you have to watch out for because uh, they, they're too lazy to read the Bible. They're too lazy to study. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And we get chapter 4, look at verse number 1. And the Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. So they were in the faith, they're saved man, see? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. There are saved men. There are saved men in San Pedro and, and, and uh, L.A. and California that teach false doctrine because they don't study or they're too lazy to find out what God said or, or, they, or their uh, children uh, when it comes to uh, maturity in, in uh, biblical things. Uh, how, how many, I don't know how many good men that I've talked to uh, that don't even believe you have a pure text. Uh, different, different doctrinal beliefs, totally different doctrinal beliefs. Uh, talk about replacement theology and talk about uh, uh, it's all kinds of uh, substantia. Uh, oh, there's all kinds of weird teachings that saved men will teach just because they're immature in their Bible. They're, they're, you say, why are you saying all these things? I'm saying all these things because you're sitting in a very rare place. And I'm not saying that because it's my church and I'm the pastor. I'm saying that because it is the truth. We are in a very strange place. It's very unique. You won't find another one like it for at least 30 miles. No, I take that back. Max Graves is probably 15 miles away. He's good brother. And he teaches the, he teaches the Bible, he teaches the King James Bible. But you find an independent, Bible-believing church that's on the King James Bible, you have found a rare bird. And it's getting more and more rare. The modern-day Christi Christendom today is 90% corrupt and apostate. That's not an accurate figure. That's just my guess. That's what I observe and what I hear on the radio 
what I see that masquerades as preachers today just it's just uh, sad to me to see that stuff. Yes. Nobody cares what God said anymore. Everybody wants to make everybody happy, make everybody feel good. Uh, 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 entertainment, uh, programs for all ages, uh, 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 the songbooks that people like and Bibles that people like. And they're not building a church that what God likes. They're building a church well, what the people like. And we didn't come here to worship people. We didn't come here to, to find out about people. Come here to find out about God. And come here to worship God. Come here to know about God, those things. And uh, churches today are just, they're, they're, they've, 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 uh, some of them, I, you know, some of them are in it for the money, I suppose. I've heard lost people say, I ain't never going to them churches. Uh, organized religion, uh, for, forget that. I said, well, why, why you think that way? Oh, they're all in it for the money. Well, I said, no, they're not. There's some good ones out there. And I try to give them a few good churches to go to if you want to check one out. Uh, but I understand what they're, th I don't understand what they're, you, you see all, you ever see, how many of you have seen that pop-off guy? You ever see that guy come on TV? He come out there with that prayer cloth. Now you got to have this prayer cloth. And now I'm going to hold it up to the screen. And there's going to be a collection. If you put your hand on the screen, you'll get the healing. Yeah, boy, he goes, man. He goes. Oh, a bunch of, <laughs> no, bunch of nonsense, man. Bunch of crazy talk. And, 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 and people send that money in to get that prayer cloth. It's a free prayer cloth for any donation. Well, if it's a donation, it ain't free, man. Come on. Uh, there, there's uh, hucksters by the millions out there. And, uh, and you, 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 if you have a King James Bible, that's the only thing you have in life that you can trust not to deceive you and not to be in error or not to have a contradiction or not to have a problem. And no matter where else you go, no matter what other source you try to find, you're going to be in that realm of folly or error. People just can make mistakes. Amen. 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 Um, and, I, and I go and I bring it right home to this pulpit. You hear me make some statement. You hear me say something. It, 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 you, just, you just say, well, Brother Anders, he means well, but he, he got it wrong. Unless it's in that book, unless I, unless I give it to you from the Bible, you just, you just write it off. Just, well, bless him, he's getting old. He don't, you know, he, he's not remembering stuff. That's all right. That's fine. That's fine. Because it ain't about the preacher. It's about what, what the message, about the message that we get from a, a, a perfect source. All right. That's all I wanted to say. You've got lost men that are brilliant men, and they, they cannot discern spiritual things, and they write great works. You you know, watch out for that stuff. Uh, traditions of men. Uh, uh, faiths and practices and doctrines that are just tradition. Like Catholic is the easiest one to think about. And then saved men uh, that just don't know their Bible well enough to be a teacher of it and, and be accurate about it. All right, so with that said, let's, um, let's go ahead then and uh, call our attention to our military men.